Hey guys, my name is Devin Cherry. I'm an aspiring level designer, and today I'm going to show you how to simulate uh, buoyancy within uh, UDK using a radial force actor. So let me first show you how I applied uh, the use of buoyancy for uh, a short puzzle uh, that I'm working on, and then we'll create a new level from scratch and just show you basically how how it functions and stuff like that. So let me jump in really quick. So what I have happened here, I have an empty pool here, and if you press this uh, lever here, we start to get a pool filled with uh, some sort of acid, and then if we turn this wheel, it disappears. Then I also get the material to change. Let me turn it back on. And now let me show you the buoyancy aspect. So I have a button here. Brings out a barrel. Oh, I missed. And if you miss and fall in, you get uh, damage applied to you. That's how you solve that puzzle. You have to get the barrel, fill the pool, throw the barrel about halfway, jump onto it and jump across. So that's how I apply buoyancy for a puzzle. Now let's create a new, I'll show you the demonstration level we're going to recreate, which basically does the same thing as this, just uh, uh, very much simplified. So let me open that real quick. So right here is a test level where we have a lever that once you pull it, the water fills and, you can, and buoyancy gets turned on. And then this wheel, once you turn it, the water drains and the buoyancy is turned off. And then we have a K-actor barrel right here just so we can test the buoyancy. So let me jump into this, show you what we're going to do today. So we pull that lever, pull fills, turn wheel, pull drains. So let's fill up the pool again. As we can see, we can get the same kind of effect here. We can jump across. Oops. You get the point. So, we're going to start this from scratch. We're going to recreate this area here, and I'll show you how to work the buoyancy. And this is the simple kismet. It's not too much. We only need one variable for the pool, whether or not the pool's full or not. And then we just do a bunch of things based upon whether or not that boolean is true or false. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do, we're going to go up to New Map, Create New Level, and we're going to do a blank map. So the first thing we're going to do before we even build any BSP geometry, we're just going to go up to View, World Properties, and then under Default Game Type, change that to UT Game, and then under Game Type for PIE, change that to UT Game. That way we have the link gun, we have the physics gun, and our kismet uh, will, will be recognized and work properly. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is your builder brush. This is basically what you use to build BSP geometry. And a BSP stands for binary space partition. That's not really too important, but if you ever no wanted to know what that means, that's what it means. And you use a BSP to just block out levels, block out environments, just to get scaling right and flow correct. So we're just going to be using BSP shapes just for simplicity. So uh, with our BSP selected here, let's right click uh, on this cube under brushes, right click and you'll get this new window. It'll ask you what dimensions do you want that builder brush to be. So right now it's at 256, 256 by 256 in the X, Y, and Z, so that's that size right here, you get a nice cube. So I'm going to set the X to 2048, the Y to 2048, and then the Z to 768. Just so we get like a large play area here. And then once I have that size the way I want it, I'm going to go under CSG and hit CSG Add. And then you'll get added geometry that you can walk on. And it has collision. So next to what we're going to do, 
is we're going to set up our uh, small little uh, cut into the ground that simulates our pool. So in order to do that, let's go back, right click on brushes again for cube. Now we're going to change the size to 512 by 512 by 512. And it's important to make sure that the builder brush is sticking on top, sticking out on top of the surface of our BSP here. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be above it so that a hole's cut that we can see. So once it's positioned correctly, we're going to press CSG subtract, which is right next to the add. So press subtract, and now we got a hole, which is really good. Next, I'm going to hold down the L key and then left click in our scene. And that creates a light for us. We just need a simple light, nothing fancy. Now I'm going to hit the space bar twice to bring up the scaling uh, wi widget. I'm just going to scale this so it just is bright enough for the whole scene. And that's all I really need to do. Uh, one thing I'm actually going to do, I'm going to go up here for brush wireframe, click that, and then I'm going to select our red builder brush, move that out of the way, and as you can see, our subtracted brush is gold, yellow, and then our additive is blue. Just for reference, if you're ever working with uh, BSP and wireframe, that's how you tell the two different uh, kind of uh, CSGs apart. So add is blue, subtract is gold. So with the larger blue additive brush selected, I'm going to hit Control P to get the size of my builder brush to conform to that size. And now I'm going to go up to here to geometry mode, and this allows you to uh, select faces of your brush and move them up or down, kind of like if you're editing faces in 3ds Max or Maya. So I'm just going to just be in edit mode, select the top face of my builder brush, and I'm just going to drag up. That's all I need to do. I'm going to exit out again. Now with the size of our builder brush, the way we want it, I just wanted to have it uh, as t like taller than the level and about the same size as the level because I'm going to add in a light mass importance volume just so we can just uh, bake with light mass. So I'm going to left click on add volumes under volumes here. I'm going to find light mass importance volume. And I'm just going to move my builder brush and then this uh, yellowish volume, that's our light mass. So right now I'm just going to go up here, I'm going to change the lighting quality setting. Just change that to preview, we're not going to do anything fancy, and I'm just going to do build all really fast. Just to get our lighting set up, and then we can start adding our static meshes and uh, convert them to K actors. And then from there, we can start uh, scripting. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to bring in our static meshes that we need. Uh, for this, for the example, if you remember from the demonstration video, uh, we had a wheel uh, and a lever and then our K actor for uh, the barrel and then we also had a plane with a water texture on it uh, that acts as our pool pool water so I'm going to go up to our content browser uh, and then under having new case game selected over here and the filter on top here I'm going to search I'm going to type in wheel and then I'm also going to hit static mesh just to filter out more and this is our this is our wheel that we want so I'm going to left click drag that into our scene. I'm going to press spacebar to get the widget for rotation. I'm just going to rotate facing this way. And I'm also going to just scale it uh, so it's pretty large, just so it acts as our lever. And then I'm also going to hit, I'm going to hold Alt and then uh, left click drag on one of the axes to create a duplicate. Create a duplicate, and then I'm just going to move it upwards. And now we need uh, one of the pipe we use as our lever, so I'm going to type in pipe. And this is the pipe we use right here. Uh, S underscore HU underscore deco underscore pipes underscore SM underscore pipe set uh, B01. So let's just left click drag that into our scene. Now I'm going to position it so it pretty much fits on the wheel. Now I'm, all, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do non uniform scaling mode. Just gonna scale this up a little bit, make it skinny, make it taller. And I'm just gonna make it slightly skinnier. We're not going for anything perfect. Just something that makes sense. So now that now there's our lever. That's good. Now I'm gonna go back to our content browser. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna type in barrel. And we're going, be, we're going to be using a remade fizz barrel. So let's drag that into our scene. And then the last thing we're going to need, we're going to need a plane. So I'm going to type in plane. 
And we're going to need the one that says no collision model, the one that's 18 tries and 16 verts, not the 5,000 tries. Uh, we just want a simplistic plane. So let's drag that into our scene. And the thing about planes is they're only viewable from one side. So if you if you see if you see your widget here, but you don't see your plane, just move around, maneuver the camera, and you'll find it. So I'm just going to rotate it so it's facing upwards. I'm going to place it at the bottom of our pool here. It's good. And I'm going to go back up to our non-uniform scale tool. I'm just going to scale it so it just encompasses the 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 bottom of the pool so it's filling it up all the way. So the last thing we're going to do here, we're going to get a water material just to apply to this uh, plane just so it looks like water. So I'm going to remove plane from my search bar and I'm going to uncheck static meshes I'm going to check materials and I'm still under UDK, UDK game. Now I'm going to type in water under the search bar having materials uh, selected under our filter here. I'm going to go down and I'm going to choose M underscore water underscore zero three apply that to our plane and now you see our water. So that's good. So now what we're going to do, we're going to convert a bunch of our static meshes to interbactors so that we can animate them in matinee. So the only things that are going to be uh, animated here are the plane is the plane's going to be animated, the lever here is going to be animated, and then this wheel over here is going to be animated. So holding down control, I'm going to start selecting all of them. This allows us to select multiple things. So I have all three of them uh, selected. Now I'm going to right click, convert, convert to mover. Now this converts everything I've selected to interbactors. And just to confirm, having all of those three selected, I'm going to hit F4 on the keyboard to bring up all their properties. And now on the top here, you can say, you see it says interbactor properties three selected. So all three of those are interbactors, which is what we want. Now the last thing we're going to do here, we're going to right click on the barrel, uh, go to convert, convert to K actor. So now it is a K actor, we can manipulate it with our physics gun. So that's good, that's what we want. That's how we're going to use to check our buoyancy. Now I'm going to, with the barrel selected, I'm going to hit F4. Now I'm going to find, I'm going to type in the search property, uh, I'm going to type in the word base. And then under dynamic SM actor, the property pawn can base on. Check that because if you don't check it, that means when you try to jump on the barrel while uh, it's in the water, you're only you're just gonna bounce off. With base can ba uh, pawn can base on checked, you'll land on the barrel and be able to stand on it and jump from it. So that's what we want. That's what the kind of behavior we want. So now that we have our K actors and uh, our K actor on our interbactor uh, set up, let's jump into Kismet and we can start scripting uh, the lever being pulled and the wheel turning. So let's go to Kismet up here, left click, bring up Kismet in a new window. I'm just going to separate the two windows. Now the first thing I want to do, I want to create a variable that will control, what, uh, a boolean variable that will control uh, whether or not the pool is full or not. So I'm just going to right click, go to new variable, bool, and I'm going to name uh, the var name, I'm going to change from none to is uh, pool full. And I'm going to leave the default at false because the pools could be not full by default. So that's all. We, that's the only variable we need. So with the variable selected, hit C on the keyboard to create a comment. I'm just going to type in variables. Now we got a nice little box around our variable just to keep it isolated and neat. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to animate our pipe here. So when you pull it, it's going to animate how it was in our demonstration video. It's going to be pulled down to the left and then go back to its initial position so you know it's been pulled. So making sure that the pipe is selected in the editor, let's right click, go to new matinee, double click on the matinee to bring up matinee window. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag the red triangle, left click drag it to one second because I only want the animation to be one second long. Now making sure the pipe is selected in the editor, right click, go to add new empty group. I'm going to call this lever. Now right click on that empty group and do add new movement track. So now we have a movement track, which is what we want. And now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to set up about four or five keyframes that I'm going to use to, for each keyframe, I'm going to move this to the left and rotate it down a little bit. So at 0.2 seconds, uh, hit enter. Make sure, make sure you, can, you're, you can move your black slider. Go to 0.2 seconds, hit enter to create a new keyframe. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the spacebar to bring the rotation widget. I'm just going to rotate it about 11.25 degrees, and then move it down a little bit. And now we see we have that kind of motion going so far. And now the next keyframe is going to be at 0.4 seconds, so move the slider to 0.4 seconds. Hit enter for a new keyframe. Rotate it in another 11.25 degrees, and then move it down a little bit. Just make sure it looks good. Yeah, so far so good. Now at 0.6 seconds, let's rotate it 11.25 degrees more. Move it down a little bit more. Now at 0.8 seconds, let's keep the, we're doing the same steps here. At 0.8 seconds, rotate 11.25 degrees, and then move it down a little bit. And then at one second, hit enter for our last keyframe, do the last 11.25 seconds, and then slide it down just a little bit more. So now, once we play our animation, it looks like it's being pulled, which is exactly what we want. So now we can X out of matinee. Uh, so what that our matinee is set up, uh, we can set up our trigger here. So I'm going to uh, maximize my scene here. I'm going to right click in front of the uh, lever, go to add actor, and then add trigger. Now I'm just going to place this trigger right in front of our lever here. And now back in Kismet, making sure our uh, trigger is selected in the scene, let's right click, do new event using trigger underscore zero, and then let's do used. And then we're going to go use to play, and then complete it to reverse. And I'll show you why in a second. Let me just make sure we can max, change the max trigger count from 1 to 0 so we can use this infinitely. So now let's jump in and I'll show you why we did the completed to reverse. It's like we pulled it down and pulled it back up. So that's what that's the kind of behavior I wanted. So if you want something different, you can change the matinee uh, to your liking. And the animation was kind of slow. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go under play rate. I'm just going to change 1 to 2 just to make it play faster, play twice as fast. So I'm just going to see if it's playing faster than that. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Now I'm going to disconnect used from play because we're going to have to do a few things before then. So I'm going to just drag these uh, away because uh, now we're going to animate our wheel really fast. Uh, selecting this trigger, holding down alt, and then dragging in one of the axes, create a duplicate, move it in front of the wheel. Now we have a trigger for our wheel. Now with the wheel selected, let's go back into Kismet. Now let's right click, do a new matinee, double click to get the matinee up. And now I'm going to right click in the empty space here, do add new empty group, I'm going to name this wheel. And now I'm going to do add new movement track. The animation is going to be one second too. So let's bring our red triangle to one second just to make our animation one second long. So what I'm going to do here, my first keyframe, um, we're gonna, the first keyframe is at zero seconds, so the second keyframe we're going to do is going to be at 0.2 seconds. But before we start uh, making any keyframes, down on the bottom here, we're going to check use quaternion interpolation. And basically what this means is uh, we're going to rotate it, uh, each keyframe we're going to rotate it, uh, the wheel 90 degrees. So uh, we're going to do that total four times so that it spins in a full circle. And if we don't have uh, quaternion interpolation checked, if we rotated it in 360 degrees, the uh, wheel would not actually spin because you rotated a full circle, so it's at the initial position, it's that again. But using quad turning and turbulation, it actually rotates that full 360. So I'm just going to check that. Now with that checked, at 0.2 seconds, hit enter. Now let's rotate our wheel 90 degrees. I'm going to do yeah, 90 degrees positive. That's good. 0.4 seconds another keyframe, rotate it another 90 degrees, at 0.6 seconds we're going to do it again, another 90, 
And then lastly, at 0.8 seconds, we're going to do the last 90. So let's see if it actually rotates in a full circle. Yep, that's working. And actually, we don't actually need the animation to be one second, so let's just move this to 0.8 seconds, so it's the exact length of our last keyframe. Play it, and it's working. Great. That's exactly what we want. Now let's uh, select our trigger in front of our wheel, right click, go new event using trigger zero, then used, and then under its properties, change max trigger count to zero. And let's plug it into play just to see if it's working correctly. It is, which is really good. But we know I noticed that the wheel was too tall or too high up, so I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. With the wheel spinning properly, we uh, made sure we tested it. The last thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to select our matinee for the wheel uh, spinning. I'm just going to hit rewind on play. The reason why I'm going to do that is because uh, the player will have uh, multiple opportunities to drain and refill the pool as many times as they want. And uh, if we don't have rewind on play, the wheel will only spin once, once the player uses it. But if they want to use it again, uh, since it hasn't rewound on play, it won't be able to turn again. So every time we play it, we're going to rewind on the play. So as soon as it's done playing, it's going to spin back and rewind and so that we can spin it again. So that's why we do that. So now I'm going to disconnect those. I'm going to select all these guys, uh, holding down uh, Control and Alt and left click dragging to do this marquee selection. Just select all these guys, just move them to the side. Because the first thing we're going to do here, we're going to handle touch events. So once the player touches the trigger, I want it to display certain information based on the value of our is pool full uh, variable. So if we're at the lever, what I want the lever to do, if the lever is pulled, it's going to fill the pool with water. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to make the pool water rise up. And then if the wheel is turned, we're going to drain the pool and make it go back to its initial state here. So if the pool is empty and the player trigger uh, touches the trigger in front of the lever, I want the I want it to display saying pull lever to, full, uh, to fill the pool. So that's what we're going to do right now. So let's left click on this, uh, make sure our trigger is selected, that's in front of the lever, and then right click, do new event using trigger underscore one, and do touch. Now the, the only thing we're going to change here is the max trigger count to zero, so it'll always fire. So now what we want to do is we want to compare the value of this is pool full uh, variable. Because we'll be changing that based on what happens. So if the player pulls the lever and fills the pool, once the lever's pulled, we're going to change the value from false to true for is pool full uh, variable. So now we need to get a compare bool so we can compare the value of our boolean. So let's right click, do new condition, comparison, compare bool. So now every time this trigger is touched, I want to compare the bool. And now uh, what bool do we want? We want to do the is pool full uh, boolean variable. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new name variable that will reference that uh, boolean. So let's go to new variable, name variable. Now under expected type, let's change that to bool. And then under find bar name, it is is pool full. We get the check mark so it knows it's referencing this boolean right there. So let's plug that into bool. So now, uh, to think logically, if the pool is, so is pool full, uh, if it's true, that means the pool is full. So what do we want to say to the player if they touch the lever? Uh, if the pool is full. And we, if, as you know, if we pull a lever, we want the pool to be f empty to full. So if the pool is already full, we want to tell the player, okay, the pool is already full, you can't use the, you can't use the, uh, you can't use the lever. So let's do new action, uh, voice announcements, and then play announcement. And when you play an announcement, we're going to do announcement text. So we're going to say the pool is already full. So now I'm going to plug that tr from true to in of the uh, play announcement. Now with the play announcement uh, selected, let's hit control C, control V, create a duplicate. And now we're going to do one for false, meaning the pool is empty. So we want to say uh, pull lever to fill pool. And that's all we really need to do for this one touch event. So we're going to do the same thing essentially with the other trigger for our wheel, but it's kind of it's kind of going to be opposite. So with the trigger in front of our wheel selected, let's right click, do new event using trigger underscore zero, and then we're going to do touch. 
And once again, we're going to change the max trigger count from one to zero. Now let's get let's uh, hold Alt and Control, and then uh, select all uh, the compare bool node and the variable, the name variable. Now we're going to go to touched into the in, and now I'm going to copy one of the play announcements. So if the pool's full, if that's true, the wheel is going to drain it. So all we, what we want to say is uh, spin wheel to drain pool. So that will go into true. Now let's copy and paste this again. We're going to have to do one with false. So we're going to say the pool is already empty. All right, so that's all the touch events we need to do. Now just to go over it one more time. Uh, with the lever uh, touch events, if the pool is empty, we want to say to the player, OK, pull the lever to fill the pool. But if the pool is already full and the player touches the lever, we're going to say the pool is already full. You can't. You can't do it. We can't use it. And then we're going to do the opposite with the wheel here. So if the pool is empty, uh, we're going to say, OK, the pool is already empty. You can't use the wheel. But if the pool is full, we're going to say, yeah, spin the wheel and we'll drain the pool. So that's all the touch events we need. So I'm going to select all these guys, move them up a little bit, and then I'm going to press C on the, uh, the keyboard to bring up a comment. My comment's just going to be touch events. So that's good. Now before we get into more of uh, the actual use events, uh, we still need to animate our plane that will move up and down when the pool is full. So it will give the illusion that the pool is full if it's all the way at the top and moves. So with the plane selected, also just a heads up, if you've been having trouble selecting the plane because of the water material, that's because it's transparent. So if you have this button here selected, allow translu uh, translucent selection, you'll be able to select it no problem. But if you have it unchecked, if you try to select the pool, you'll get the BSP floor underneath it. So having it selected, select our pool. And now all we have to do is go into our Kismet, create a new matinee, double click that matinee, and then let's create a new empty group. Let's just call this water. Now let's right click on the empty group, do add new movement track. The animation is going to be one second long. Now we only need one key, one keyframe at the start and one keyframe at the one second mark. Now I'm just going to pull this all the way up. So let's see if that's playing. That's pretty good. That's all. That's that's fine. So now that we have our pool actually filling with water, now we can start uh, doing a few things here. So the first thing we're going to worry about, we're going to do our lever. Uh, we're going to do our lever first. So that's trigger one. So what we need to do when the trigger is used, we want to compare uh, the pool again. Uh, the is pool is full vari uh, variable. So I'm going to copy and paste the compare bool in our name variable. Bring that down. Now I'm going to plug in used of the trigger one into the in. So now what we have to do here is we have to think, okay, if the pool is full already, meaning true, uh, we don't want anything to happen because the lever's responsibility is to fill the pool. And if the pool's already full, we don't want it to do anything. So if the pool is not full, meaning it's false, uh, we want to play the lever animation, and then we also want to play the water movement animation. So let's plug in false to play. And then we're going to do completed into play of the water. So let's see if that's working. Yep, that's working. Great. Now what we need to do is once the pull is uh, full, once the lever is used essentially, we want to set the is pool variable, uh, is the is pool full variable to true. So what I want to do is I want to right click, go to new action, Let's go to uh, let's go down to set variable bool. So the value we want is we want true. So let's create a new boolean variable by going to new variable bool, and then change this b value from zero to one to make it true, and then plug the value into that uh, boolean. Now the target's going to be our is pool full uh, name variable. So let's copy and paste the cop uh, version of that. Plug that into target, and so once the animation for the uh, levers complete, we want to set that boolean. 
So now what, basically what's happening here is once the levers, the trigger is used to pull the lever, we're going to say, okay, is the pull full or not? If it is full, nothing's going to happen. But if it's not full, then we're going to play the lever animation of you pulling it. Then we're going to set the is pull full variable uh, to true. And then we also play the water animation to fill, which is exactly what we want. So I'm just going to move these guys a little bit downwards just to give us some space for our other trigger. So we're going to do the same sort of system here, except we're going to be worrying about the, the trigger in front of the wheel, which does the opposite than the lever. So let's copy and paste a version of the compare bool in our is pull full uh, variable. Let's plug in the used into the in. And now thinking about the wheel, if the pool is full, meaning it's true if it's full, then we want to drain it with the wheel. So what we want to do here, if it's true, we're going to play the animation for the wheel. So the wheel will spin. And then once that's done, we want to reverse the movement of the water so it'll drain again, so it'll go down. And then from here, we want to also set the boolean variable is pool full. We want to set that back to false once the pool is drained. So let's plug that into the completed of the uh, wheel uh, spinning animation, and then we'll just change the true uh, back to zero to false. So now right here, it's saying, okay, uh, if the trigger for the wheel is used, uh, we check if the pool is full or not. If it is full, then we play the animation of the wheel spinning, and then we play the animation of the water in reverse, so it's draining, and then we set the is pool, uh, is pool full variable back to false which will come in handy if we want to go back and forth uh, draining and undraining the pool. So let's see if that's working. Okay, so it fills and it drains. And then we also have the touch events working as well. And we can't use the lever now. Yep, everything's working the way we want. So that's really good. So the very last step here is to actually create the buoyancy for the K-Actor barrel to float on. Now in order to simulate buoyancy in UDK, without going into hardcore programming and stuff like that, uh, we're going to be using a cylindrical force actor. So let's go up to the, uh, the uh, content browser, and then under the tabs here, let's go to actor classes. And I'm just going to type in the search bar cylindrical and then we'll get uh, right here RB underscore cylindrical force actor. So let's left click drag that into our scene. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this a little bit so it's encompassing the entire pool and I'm going to pull it up a little bit and we're going to pull it up just so, so it's slightly above our ground here and that'll come in handy for when we uh, so the buoyancy actually uh, takes place on top of the surface of the water. Now the, uh, the last step here with the cylindrical force actor is we gotta tell it how much force to apply. So let's hit F4 to bring up its properties, and then scroll down. You'll find a lift strength uh, property. It defaults at zero, and we want to make that 180. That's the only property we need to mess with. So now, now one thing we have to do now is we have to turn this uh, force actor on and off based on whether or not the pool is full or not. So if the pool is full, we want to turn on the turn on the force actor so that buoyancy occurs. And if the pool is empty, we want to turn it off so buoyancy does not occur. So let's go back into our Kismet. Now what we have to do is go to right click, new action, toggle, then toggle. And this allows us to turn on and off actors uh, how we feel fit. So with the cylindrical force actor selected in our scene. Let's right click on target the variable connector for the toggle here and do new object var using the cylindrical force actor. What we want to have happen is as soon as the, uh, uh, the lever is pulled we want to turn the buoyancy on. So find our matinee with our uh, lever attached and then for completed let's hit turn on. Let's plug that to turn on to the toggle and then with the wheel spinning animation matinee selected once it's completed, we want to turn off the uh, force actor again. So now that we're turning off and on our uh, cylindrical force actor, let's see if that works. 
So scrolling, I'm gonna scrolling on the mouse wheel will just give us the physics gun, so we can pick up our K actor. So let's turn on the water. Now let's place our barrel in, and there we go. So now let's turn, let's drain the pool, and now it turned off. So let's uh, fill the pool one more time, just to confirm that it's working again. And it is. Awesome. Now the only thing now I'm going to do, I'm going to hit, I'm going to hold down Control and Alt, uh, left click, drag a marquee selection around all the uh, used events, hit C on the keyboard and just do uh, used events. And that uh, concludes the tutorial. Let me just bake lighting here real quick and I'll just summarize what we went over today. Uh, today we went over uh, just basic matinee uh, uses for pulling the lever and then we also went over quaternion interpolation for rotating the wheel 360 degrees and then we went over the use of the cylindrical force actor to create buoyancy, buoyancy. and we also went over uh, basic uses of triggers and then set variables for boolean variables uh, stuff we have done in the past before, but it's just interesting to see what other things we can do with those same principles. So that concludes the tutorial. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to my channel for more of these tutorials. Also comment uh, with any issues you're having, or if you need a certain topic covered, I will be more than happy to cover it. So uh, thanks for watching.